All praise is due to Allah. His praise is the finest beginning and completion of all speech. I praise Allah as He is perfect in every way. He deserves continuous praise that results in His mercy being sent down to us. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. Allah blessed this Ummah by sending to them the best individual among mankind. And Allah made adhering to His Sunnah a means of protection against turmoil and adversity. I further bear witness that our beloved Prophet, role model and leader Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. He had the most dignified of qualities and traits. O oh Allah, grant an abundance of your commendation and protection to him, as well as to his noble family, esteemed companions, and all who follow their path until the day of recompense. Servants of Allah, observe taqwa of Allah as he rightfully deserves. Taqwa is what leads to honor, guidance, and Allah being pleased with us. People of Iman, Observe taqwa of Allah as He rightfully deserves and do not die except submitting to Allah in Islam. Taqwa in our hearts is the path to being uplifted and it is the straight path that Allah accepts from His servants. Thus we must observe taqwa of Allah our Lord. He is the only one who deserves the finest and most abundant of praise. Dear Muslims, a good deal of time has passed since the era of Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. Yet, even after his departure, Allah's Messenger of Islam with all of its majestic directives still continued to spread and it was embraced by many peoples of the earth whose innate disposition remained intact. However, a major element of Islam's directives was eventually neglected by people who came later on and this caused minds to stray and slip into darkness. In our current time, the presence of that element has continued to decline and this has caused Muslims who care about their religion to become quite agitated. That is because the element we are referring to emanates from having sincere love for certain things. I beseech Allah to grant all of you His protection. The element we are referring to is sound conduct. That includes observing sound conduct towards Allah and also observing sound conduct towards Allah's Messenger. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. Who was the most virtuous of people, came from the most virtuous of places and was the most knowledgeable of all individuals who reached the pinnacle of religious practice, sound understanding, and personifying proper conduct. This era of ours is one in which humanity has attained immense intellectual development and remarkable advances in civilization, material knowledge, and technology. However, it is also an era in which there is a need more pressing than ever for our souls to be nourished with the sound morals and virtuous ethics that would allow us to have certainty in the truth from Allah and be content with it. This is what would rescue an afflicted humanity from the storms of misguidance, corruption and immorality. Dear people of Iman, the highest level of observing sound conduct towards Allah can be found in the luminous words used by Allah's prophets when they called upon Him. By words like theirs, our souls attain the rewards bestowed by Allah the Most Merciful. The Prophet Ibrahim, may Allah grant him continued protection, was an individual whom Allah granted a degree of love greater than others. He said words which ingrain in people's hearts proper conduct towards Allah. The Prophet Ibrahim said, And when I am ill, it is he who cures me. Ibrahim ascribed illness to himself and ascribed cure to the Lord of all creation. He did that to observe proper conduct towards Allah. There was also the Prophet Ayyub, may Allah grant him continued protection, who called upon his Lord using remarkable words. He said, I have been touched by hardship, and you are the most merciful of all who show mercy. 
He said, I have been touched by, and he did not say, I have been afflicted with. Additionally, he did not ask his Lord for cure immediately, and he did not ascribe bad things to his Lord, the most exalted, who is perfect in every way. Rather, the Prophet Ayyub ascribed bad to shaitan. The mode of expression used clearly demonstrated Ayyub's purity of soul, strength of will, and contentment with blessings. He said, indeed, shaitan has touched me with adversity and torment. There was also the Prophet Musa, may Allah grant him continued protection. And he was an individual to whom Allah spoke directly. Musa provided a further instance of brilliant words when he said, My Lord, I am most surely indeed of all the goodness that you send down to me. And Imam Al-Tabari, may Allah have mercy upon him, pointed out that some scholars mentioned that when the Prophet Musa said those words, he was in a state of utmost exhaustion. He had no money with him, not even a single coin. And his statement implied that he was seeking food from Allah, the Almighty, whom none can coerce or overpower. There was also the Prophet Isa, may Allah grant him continued protection, who spoke further words reflecting the epitome of sound conduct when addressing Allah. The Prophet Isa stated, Had I ever said such a thing, you would have undoubtedly known that I did. He did not use words like, I never said that. There is a stark contrast between those two replies in their words and their connotations. Even more remarkable and radiant were captivating words in that same regard used by the leader of all messengers. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. In one of his supplications, he said, while calling upon his Lord, in one of his supplications, he said while calling upon his Lord, All goodness lies in your two hands, and no bad is ascribed to you. This was collected by Muslim. Additionally, Al Bukhari collected the well known hadith about when the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, was taken to Al Quds by night and then taken up through the heavens. The hadith mentions that that was when the obligatory prayers were prescribed. When the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, told the Prophet Musa about that, he responded, Return to your Lord and request a reduction for your Ummah. Our Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, eventually stated, I ask my Lord for reduction to the point that I feel ashamed to ask further. I am pleased with what he prescribed and I submit to that. This statement is an incredible instance of the matchless character of our Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection, which reflects his pure nature and the fact that his innate sense of shame remained intact. His example is like the body of fresh water. His example is like a body of fresh water, while others are like an ocean of salt water in comparison. Could the two ever be alike? The pinnacle of completion that he reached is beyond what words can describe. When people strive to foster proper morals within themselves and use gentle words which reflect that, they would have sound conduct that enables them to attain the most honorable of ranks. Al Imam ibn al Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that observing sound conduct towards Allah means complying with the directives of his religion, as well as acting properly towards him inwardly and outwardly. Sound conduct towards Allah does not come about for a person without three things. Knowing Allah's names and attributes, knowing Allah's religion, His directives, and what He loves and detests, and having a soul that is prepared to accept the truth in knowledge, action, and all circumstances in general. Servants of Allah, sound conduct towards Allah requires sincerely devoting all acts of worship to Him alone, hastening to do what pleases Him, having complete humility towards Him, placing full trust in Him, being ashamed before Him, not overstepping the bounds He set, and contemplating the amazing signs He has placed throughout creation. Contemplate the lines written throughout creation. They are messages which the Most High King has sent to you. If you only contemplated what was written in them, you would find them saying that all deities besides Allah are false. Whether they speak with voices or remain silent, all of them guide us to the attributes of their Lord. Dear people of Iman, part of completing one's sound conduct towards Allah is observing sound conduct towards Allah's noble prophet. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. Allah the Most Exalted said, People of Iman, do not raise your voices above the voice of the prophet and do not call him loudly as you would call one another, lest your deeds be rendered futile without you realizing. Qatada, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that people used to address the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, loudly, 
with their voices raised and Allah admonished them and forbade them from doing so. al dahak may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that Allah forbade them from calling the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, loudly in the manner they would call one another. Allah instructed them to address Muhammad, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, as the Prophet in order to give him due honor and respect. Thus, if conduct includes not raising one's voice over his because merely raising it leads to one's deeds being rendered void, what do you think should be said about raising people's opinions and ideas over his sunnah and the message that he brought? Allah the Most Exalted said, people of Iman, do not put yourselves ahead of Allah and his messenger. This command remains in effect until the day of resurrection and it is not abrogated putting anything ahead of the son of the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, even after his death, is the same as putting things ahead of him during his life. And the scholars have explained that there is no difference between the two. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented that the foremost component of sound conduct towards Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation or protection, is having complete submission to him, compliance with his directives, acceptance of all that he informed us about, and not putting the command, prohibition, or permission of any person ahead of his. Rather, he is the one whom commands, prohibitions, and permissions are to be taken from. Thus, observing sound conduct towards him himself is obligatory, and after his death, the same applies to all that is authentically reported of his sunnah and guidance. It is truly unfortunate that some among the people of Islam do not give their messenger the rights or status that he deserves. This applies even when those people express their love and reverence for him, since their love is one that has no tangible effect in their lives, conduct, or compliance with his teachings. It is quite surprising to find people who may have numerous possessions, yet they remain devoid of sound conduct and character. In our current time, in our current time, there are people who have adopted various ideas from others who are astray. That has led them to reject authentic hadith from our Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, and claim that those texts are at odds with reality, opposed by the intellect, conflict with modern medicine and science, or are incompatible with human dignity. They claim that those texts of Islam stagnate the mind, restrict its brilliance, and stifle creativity. With that being said, we must understand that it is crucial to inculcate sound conduct in all realms within ourselves, in our beliefs, words, and actions. We must understand that it is crucial to nurture our young ones and our societies to have proper reverence for the guidance of our Prophet, may Allah grant commendation and protection in our words, beliefs, deeds, morals, and conduct. That is what leads to maintaining a correct Islamic identity and defends the dignified lands of Islam against those who advocate ideologies of terrorism or immorality. In that way, our Ummah would progress, attain honor, and achieve the greatest of accomplishments. Allah the Almighty and Most Majestic said, Indeed, those who seek to harm Allah and His Messenger will be expelled from Allah's mercy in this world and the hereafter, and Allah has prepared for them a humiliating torment. May Allah bless all of us by His two revelations, and may He enable us to glean benefit from the guidance of His final Messenger. I say this much, and I implore Allah, the greatest and most majestic, to forgive me, you, and all Muslims. Thus, seek His forgiveness and repent to Him. He is surely continually forgiving the bestower of mercy. All praises due to Allah. He always has complete knowledge of everything about His servants, even the most minute of details. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without any partner. He will grant an honorable abode to those whose love for Him is genuine. I further bear witness that our beloved Prophet Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. On the day of resurrection, he will be granted the exclusive blessings of having al maqam al-Mahmud and the banner of praise. O oh Allah, grant your commendation, protection, and blessings to him, as well as his pure family, esteemed companions, and all who follow their path until the day of recompense. Servants of Allah, you must continue to observe taqwa of Allah. When you do so, you will attain true happiness in this world 
and the hereafter. Dear Ummah of Iman, observing sound conduct is the epitome of goodness within an individual. This is a matter that is unmistakably established by Islam and one that its prominent scholars have expounded upon with great clarity and detail. Thus, it is a tremendous calamity when any people of our Ummah lack this feature. Al Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, We have a greater need for observing sound conduct than we do for a plethora of knowledge. Moreover, Abu Dawood collected a hadith with a Hassan chain of narration from Abu Musa al Ash'ari, may Allah be pleased with him, who narrated that Allah's Messenger, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, said, It is certainly part of glorifying Allah to honor the elderly Muslim, honor someone who bears the Quran without being excessive or negligent, and honor the leader in authority who is just. Thus, completion of sound conduct entails honoring and respecting the elderly. This is especially emphasized when it comes to both of one's parents, when it comes to when it comes to spouses, relatives, and companions, when it comes to the scholars of Islam in terms of recognizing their rank, giving them the position they deserve, defending them and their integrity, and thinking well of them, and also when it comes to the leaders and authority in terms of recognizing the importance of their role, obeying them, whether in times of ease or difficulty, so long as that does not entail disobeying Allah, remaining united with them, and not contending with them or revolting against them. Each person has conduct that should be observed when dealing with him. And that applies whether people are Muslims or not. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy upon him, commented, that a person's happiness and success lie in him observing sound conduct. In contrast, his misery and failure lie in a lack of sound conduct. Nothing can enable one to attain the goodness of this world and the hereafter like observing sound conduct, and nothing can deprive one of their goodness like lacking sound conduct. If you consider modern means of communication and various social media networks, you find many glaring examples of this such as remarks which revile people in terms of their religious practice, dignity, intelligence, and possessions. Those remarks are then eagerly received by imprudent individuals or those who are insignificant but put themselves forth to speak about matters that have major ramifications. Such individuals use the aforementioned remarks to spread rumors and circulate lies. However, we must always bear in mind that Allah said, people who harm the men and women who have iman, when they are innocent of any wrongdoing, shall bear the burden of falsehood and tremendous sin. They shall bear the burden of falsehood and tremendous sin. May Allah grant all of you His mercy. You must adhere to the sound conduct exemplified by your noble prophet. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. And follow his immaculate guidance. You must also invoke Allah often to grant him commendation and protection since that is a crucial part of observing sound conduct towards him. He reached the peak of integrity. His pristine traits provide light that drives away darkness. And all of his qualities were ones of nobility. Thus, invoke Allah's commendation upon him and upon his family. This is what Allah, the most exalted, instructed us to do in his statement. Indeed, Allah grants his commendation to the Prophet, and the angels invoke Allah to grant him even further commendation. People of Iman invoke Allah to grant the Prophet commendation and to grant him protection as well. May the finest commendation and protection be granted to Allah's esteemed chosen Prophet, as well as the Prophet's righteous family, and virtuous companions. O oh Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your chosen prophet and be pleased with his esteemed righteous companions. Abu Bakr, who accompanied him in the cave during migration. Omar, who clearly set truth apart from falsehood and achieved many conquests. Uthman, who was endowed with an abundance of virtues. Ali, who was endowed with keen insight and courage, and the remainder of the ten companions who were all mentioned together in one hadith and given the glad tidings that they would be admitted to Jannah in the hereafter. O oh Allah, we implore you to be pleased with us along with them by your favor and kindness. O oh Allah, allow us to be among those for whom our prophet and role model will intercede on the day of resurrection. O oh Allah, owner of all majesty and favor, we implore you to fill our hearts with love for him and fill our lives with continued support for him. O oh Allah, grant strength to Islam and the Muslims. 
we can shirk and those engaged in it, defeat enemies of their religion, and allow this land and all other lands of Muslims to be safe and tranquil. O oh Allah, grant us safety in our lands, and make our authorities people who are righteous, support our leader with the truth, and all that is correct. O oh Allah, God, our leader, the custodian of the two holy mosques, to all that pleases you, and grant him righteous aids who direct him to what is correct and assist him in accomplishing it. O oh Allah, guide him and his deputy to all channels that would produce goodness for your servants and their lands. O oh Allah, grant them aids who direct them to what pleases you and assist them in accomplishing it. O oh Allah, guide all Muslim leaders to follow your book and the son of your prophet. O oh Allah, make them a mercy to your believing, worshipping servants. O oh Allah, safeguard all that Muslims hold sacred and defend them against those who are oppressive. O oh Allah, we implore you to protect our brothers in Palestine. O oh Allah, assist them against those who are enemies to you and enemies to them. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, we implore you to remove the subjugation that has been imposed upon our brothers in the lands of Sham, as well as in Iraq, Yemen, Burma, and all other places. Our Lord, we implore you to accept our deeds, and we beseech you to accept our repentance. O oh Allah, we implore you to forgive us, our parents, and all Muslims, whether deceased or living. O oh Allah, we implore you to grant victory and assistance to our security personnel who defend the borders of our nation. O oh Allah, we implore you to reward them greatly and allow them to return from their tasks safely. O oh Allah, we ask you to grant us your care in light of our weakness. O oh Allah, you are the Almighty and Invincible. Our Lord, grant us good in this world, grant us good in the hereafter, and protect us from torment and the hellfire. Servants of Allah, remember that Allah instructs you to do all that is right, and He forbids you from all wrong, injustice, and immorality. Always remain mindful of Allah, and always be grateful to Him. And Allah always has complete knowledge of everything that you do.